with me? Say this here. Look. Hey. Over the top. I learned is that sometimes God has to break you down to build you up. Sometimes you don't understand the riches of his grace until you've been broken and you realize that being broke made you rich. Y'all with me on that tonight? Check this out. Look, being broken, this thing don't sit right. Do it for the folks trying to get by. Came through the struggle with my head high. Being broke, yeah, I know what it feel like. But being broke made me rich. Say, being broke made me rich. Say, being broke made me rich. Huh? Being broke made me rich. Hey, gotta keep it so high, so I'm too bright. Everybody eating this good night. Gotta take a lot of too tight. Tell your daughter, just ask him. Say something like, huh. Holy Father, God in heaven, show your power. Let it come for your kingdom. Jesus, we ask that you would get rid of the opposition. Will you spread the ops out, please? The enemy has no power here. He cannot win. We ask that you would show up and spread the ops out, God. for a while now. Now, like I'm saying, like you've been with us for a minute, like you, this is not just a new thing for you. I saw somebody out here with a, with a 116 shirt on. I seen a hat. I saw Anomaly albums. I seen people who've been with us for a minute. I want y'all to understand something. You know, God does not put us on these stages and these places because there's something special about us. Matter of fact, he does it because he recognizes that we are ordinary people who want to honor an extraordinary God. That's why he does it. I call myself an anomaly because I walk in, in the world and in culture, but I'm also walking in the spirit. It's being in the world, but not of the world. Some people don't want to touch the world. They're scared they're going to get the cooties, but if you don't touch the world, they're not going to feel the healing you have to bring. Some people are so upset at the church, they don't, they just want to stay in the world. But if you don't come back to the community, you're not going to get the strength that you need to be out in the world. And that's what being an anomaly was all about, is understanding I'm an outsider, I live as an outsider, I never quite fit in. We don't, we're not put here to fit in, we're put here to stand out. Don't ever forget that. That's what God has called you to. So, anomalies, 10 years old. That being said, let's do some old school for y'all tonight. <laughs> Yeah. 
times on the radio. I just want, I want y'all to understand something. Now, it could be that you rhythmically challenged. It could be that you need a nap today. But you came to a festival. I'm not about to leave it all on the stage just to watch you watch me. We are a body of Christ. So the legs can't be moving and the arms just folding. That don't even look right. The arms can't be moving and the legs just crossed. If I'm going to be up here moving, if Deja and David going to be up here moving, if Swoop and Nate playing their heart out for the Lord, the least you can do is offer your body as a sacrifice of praise out here. Church clap, watch your neighbor do it. Come on. Get ready. Let's go. Hey. Yeah, that's what I need right now. don't know what that freedom feel like. See, following Jesus is a freedom like you ain't never tasted. I'm going to tell you a true story. See, I used to work at this grocery store. It was a cool little grocery store. I used to bag up the groceries and push the carts out, get a couple tips. It wasn't terrible, but my manager was horrible. Mean, on me for little things all the time, made me not even want to come to work. Then, across the street, I saw the grand opening of Wally World, AKA Walmart. I said, ooh, man, I wonder if I can work over there. They say the pay is better, the store is cleaner, it's nicer, but I was so attached to this old job. I was so attached, I'd been there and I didn't know how to, how to leave. So I put in my notice. I ain't gonna lie to you, I put in like a one week notice. Supposed to be two, I did one week. And I applied and got hired at Wally World. So now I'm working at Walmart, I'm excited, man. I'm stocking, just whistling, looking at the clean floors, everything is beautiful. And then I see all my friends across the street at the old store. Like, man, where you at, bro? Come back over and hang with us. And I kind of miss my friends. I walked over there. I said, what's going on with y'all? How y'all doing? 
He said, man, you're supposed to be over here with us. And the manager came outside and said, hey, Lecrae, where have you been? The manager didn't know I had left. <laughs> you are not on the schedule. You ain't, out. like, where have you been? What you need to do is get in here, get to the office, and get on the calendar so you can get some work. And I had to look at my manager and say, I regret to inform you. I no longer work for you anymore. I have a new master. <laughs> I'm not your slave no more. I'm free. I want y'all to understand that's the relationship we gotta have with Jesus. We gotta look Satan in the face and say, I regret to inform you. I no longer work for you anymore. I am a slave to Jesus now. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Is anybody free out here tonight? Is anybody free out here tonight? Now, I'm not wanting to bite my tongue, so I'm going to keep it real. Can I keep it real tonight? We are entering into one of the most divisive times of the year. One of the times where people draw lines in the sand and get mad at each other over political empires. I want you to understand something. Rome was an empire. Egypt was an empire. They crumbled. All empires will crumble, but the kingdom will remain forever. This is not the time to show how divisive we are as kingdom people. This is the time to say empires are down here, but the kingdom is up here. This is the time to say, you know what? Jesus, Jesus sets the tone, not a political party. Jesus sets the tone. Because I can guarantee you long after presidents come and go, Christ will still be king. And the Bible says that they will know us, not by how we vote, not by how we argue, not by how we fight online, but they will know us by our love. If you can't love somebody who sees things differently than you do, you must not have kids. <laughs> That'll show you real quick. I said, no, what are you doing? I vote no cookies, but well, I vote cookies. I vote no, I vote cookies. You gotta love the person who's voting cookies. So man, be led by your love. Cause at the end of the day, y'all, what you gotta understand is we are not just neighbors. Neighbors don't need each other. See, the Bible says love your neighbor, but it's deeper than that. Because you could go a year, two years, and not see your neighbors. You don't have to borrow sugar anymore. You can Instacart that to the house. The Bible says love your neighbors, but we're more than neighbors. It calls us brothers and sisters, but you can hate your brothers and sisters. Some of you got siblings you haven't talked to in a while. See? Even the twin said he got problems. He look in the mirror and get mad at himself. The point I'm making is, closer than neighbors, closer than family, is a body. You'll never hear somebody say, I don't need my legs, I don't need my arms, I don't need my eyes, I don't need my nose, I don't need, you'll never hear people say that. If I close my eyes right now, I'm gonna need my legs and arms to help me. Cause I'm relying upon them. We are a body, we have to rely upon each other. 
we need each other. So do me a favor, I want you to look at somebody, I want you to say I appreciate you. Say I thank God for you. And then say this too. All I need is you. Yeah, yeah. We a body of I love it. Listen, let me tell y'all, you know, being up here and being able to do this is not something I ever imagined. People always ask me like, what's the secret? What's the formula? And I tell people, there's only one answer, faithfulness. That's it. David was not trying to figure out how to become king. He was just faithful to God. That's it. He didn't ask to be king. He just wanted to serve God. And God put him in a place where he could do it at a different place, a different level. Wherever you are in life, just serve. Ministry is where your feet are. You don't need some special assignment. You do ministry wherever you are. Ministry means to serve. Serve people. Allow them to see God working in you. Because you never know how what you're doing can affect somebody else's life. One of my first jobs I had in the, was I worked at a call center. And I was a, a bill collector, really. And as I was collecting bills and telling people about their credit, I wasn't calling them saying, you need to pay your bills, sir, because you would get hung up on What I would do is I researched credit, understood it, called people, and explained it to them, broke it down for them, helped them. Like It, it felt like I was their credit repair counselor. By the end of the phone call, they was like, man, how much do I need to give you? I was like, you just pay your bill, bro. They were so blessed by that. They couldn't wait to pay their bill. I saw it as a ministry opportunity to serve people instead of just a job. Nobody put me in a pulpit. I wasn't a, mem a, 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 a part of a, a, a church staff. Ministry was where my feet were at. And even being on this stage, man. And coming up with 116, who knows what 116 means? I'm unashamed of the gospel. It's the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes. The reason why we talk about being unashamed is because we caught so much flack early on. It's because we would share the gospel on campus. People would spit on us, laugh at us, mock us. And we loved back and we demonstrated love and grace to people. Not because we, we thought we were bigger, better, or better. Because we knew we were sinners saved by grace. We stopped wanting to be accepted by the world and accepted by other people because we learned something. We learned that if you live for their acceptance, you will die from their rejection. And we learned that we are already accepted by the creator of the universe. God put you on this planet to be his ambassador. He's making his appeal through you. Your responsibility is to be a billboard for the goodness of God. Is to demonstrate how glorious he is, how powerful he is. You get the opportunity of representing the creator of the moon and the stars. You get to tell the world how amazing our creator is. never too dark for the light of God to come shining in. I know for a fact because there's just too many people here tonight that there's some folks struggling. Feeling like there's a shame and a guilt so dark there's no possible way they can approach God. 
And I want to just tell you something. That is a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. I want you to imagine what it must have felt like. What it must have felt like to be the people who walked with God in the cool of the day, heard his voice, saw him, experienced all his goodness, and then decided to choose their way over his, eating fruit and bringing sin into the entire world. Imagine the guilt and the shame that they carry. That you didn't just ruin your marriage or ruin your parent relationship or ruin your, you know, something at work you ruin the state of the world as we know it and yet god was kind to them and said you know what there will be consequences for your actions but i love you so much that through you a redeemer will come from generations from now who will transform everything you've done and heal the world you didn't break it so badly that it can't be fixed by me. I need you to know that. There is nothing you can do to outwork the blood of Christ. You are welcome in his arms. And if you feel guilt and if you feel shame, that's because you let down some other idol that you have, but you didn't let down God because God sees what you did and he says, I still love you. I still want you. So I need you to know that tonight, man. You are loved by the creator of the universe. As long as you got on your church clothes, you welcome into the party. Shoot the shot. Three, two, one, go.